Run it up, then run it back. Yeah. Run it up, then run it back. Run it back. Run it up. Run it back. Good run it Thursday up. morning. Run Welcome yeah, to yeah. Run It Back. My name is Michelle Beadle. We got Lou Williams, Rudy Gay on the end there, Chandler Parsons. We don't know where he is. And Sham Sharania coming to us from Chicago. And uh, Shams, you had a busy day yesterday. There was stuff happening all over the place. The one big piece of news, though, that we were waiting on was how many games is Draymond going to get suspended for? And the answer was five. So the reasoning behind all that is what? I think there are three things you can look at. One, I mean, it was clearly an unnecessary play. We talked about it yesterday, but, I mean, that chokehold, headlock, whatever you want to call it, that lasted for, I mean, several seconds. So totally unnecessary. And I think the other two factors are definitely the prior history. Um, Everything that's gone on with Draymond Green over his entire career, I mean, I'm sure we have – we can pull up graphics or something about all the times he's been fined, he's been given technicals, he's been ejected, he's been suspended – and so this is the longest suspension of Draymond Green's career mm-hmm. at five games. And I, I always got the sense around the league office yesterday that it was going to be somewhere in this four to six game range, not, not anywhere with, you know, around 10 because there was no punch thrown. It didn't escalate into something that extreme. But listen, five games for Draymond Green. The NBA held interviews with everyone. They held interviews with Draymond Green, Jaden McDaniels, Clay Thompson, um, as well as Rudy Gobert. And the big things from the, from the Warriors side was that they felt like Klay Thompson was also in, in a headlock. And that's why Draymond Green reacted the way he did. The Timberwolves on the other side, obviously, <laughs> were totally on the other side of that <laughs> and said that, you know, it, it was unnecessary the way that Draymond charged at him. So this is a Warriors team that's not dealing with Draymond Green's sideline tonight. Stephen Curry's out as well. Oh, so man. not a great time for Draymond Green to be out five games. By the way, that five-game suspension is going to cost him just under 800 thousand dollars that Love that money, painful Love to that say. money look i get that you it's the warriors and you got to have your guys back and all those but i don't remember clay being in a headlock or choked at all i remember his jersey got ripped listen i'm gonna I'm be honest the <laughs> it should have been at least three four guys in headlocks yeah you know when, <laughs> when you play on teams and a guy grabs your teammate and put him in a chokehold He's gonna be in a chokehold, and then I'm gonna be in a chokehold, and then we're gonna go down. We're gonna go down the line of chokeholds. So, chokeholds, man. Look, chokeholds for everyone. Cho- chokeholds for everyone. Look, Cat, <laughs> you need to be grabbing Draymond right now. Cat needs to Sorry be chokeholds. Sorry, need to right be now. grabbing Cat. Yeah. And listen, we go. Listen, wow. one sound, one band. Don't allow just one guy <laughs> holding his nose down there. Look. Yeah. Look, you got somebody get your teammate get off your the team. floor. This is this is a train wreck to see, man. And. I don't know if the five games is fair, but I'll be honest, this is my first time seeing somebody get choked out, you know? So really? Got, so Draymond is setting the standard for oh, chokeouts. Good it's Lord. Five, it's five games is gonna cost you about 800 grand for a chokeout. That's your first chokeout? That's, that's my first real, real <laughs> That's my first real chokeout I've seen. I think this is on point. I think, uh, you know, <laughs> I, I, I do. I mean, he targeted him. He ran after me. He's like, look, you got my guy. I gotta, I gotta do something. Now, um, you know, I, I, it's just still, I just feel bad for Rudy, man. Like, yo, that was a three three to five second choke, man. You got to bite him. Out. At that point, out. you just got to bite well, him. Well, if, he, if he'd bitten him, back. it would have be a whole nother. Yeah, we got. We are fighting at this point. Yeah, that's a fight. This I is a fight. I find it interesting that we're putting levels to this. There's like a nuance that a punch is far greater than a chokehold. But I feel like a chokehold is potentially more dangerous than a punch. I mean, I don't know who makes it, these it charts up, but... Yeah, yeah. It, anybody out there that's been in the fight, they know, like, when you're in the fight, it seems like, you know, it's way longer than what it is. Yeah. Like, that chokehold probably, to Rudy Gobert, felt like he was probably in it for about an hour and a half. <laughs> and I think that... I think that's... <laughs> you know, At least. You know? Not really. I think that scale comes from the old days, you know, the, the Pistons and the Bulls uh-huh. and, you know, when guys were really throwing punches. You didn't see a lot of guys get choked. You know, they were really throwing punches. And, I, and so I think the league is looking at it in the sense that we can't have guys out there actually throwing punches. Now, right. will we scuffle? Will guys get grabbed every once in a while? Sure. But this is a, this, that was a legit choke up. We call that a chicken wing. <laughs> we put them in a, a nice little chicken wing, and it, and it cost them a pretty penny. So. It, that's, I'm just 800000 By the way, we, we went and did a little crunching of the numbers. Thank you, Conrad. And in total, over the course of Draymond's career, it looks like 
somewhere in the 2.3, 2.4 million dollars in fines over the mm. course of this time. That's a that's. It sounds good, but he's he never seen that money anyway. I, I guess you're right. It's you getting docked it out. out of his check. Yeah, so it, it sounds good in theory that he's like lost. if you had to write the check out. If yeah, I no, physically that, had that to hurts. give you yeah. the money, I think I think a lot of I think a lot of behaviors would be different they if you had that. to physically write a check out to oh. someone. A lot of people wouldn't write the check. That's the thing. <laughs> right. I wouldn't. I'd just be like, come get me. <laughs> come come get it. it. Yeah, I would, I would <laughs> love to see how much. I've spent in fines over my career. I, Me too. So you have no idea. Yeah, I mean, it probably it'll probably be like fifty grand. God, and you just... I didn't play with my money like that. No, I, about I, a fight when I when I can see you in the back. Smart. No, that's, I, I that's spent smart. way more than that, man. I wish yeah. I, I wish I had that kind of thinking. Do you have any idea roundabout? I've been suspended. So <laughs> how did you get suspended? You like super cool. Calm, Not laid that day. back. <laughs> Not that day. <laughs> Man, that's uh, yeah, just money gone. But by the way, the other guys, Clay, Jaden, Rudy, all got fined twenty-five thousand um, dollars. Does that seem good? Like nobody needed to be suspended on that end. No, that's fair. I honestly don't understand why um, twenty-five. I mean, they got kicked out of the game. That's far. Like for twenty-five thousand dollars for, for Clay Thompson isn't really, you know. I mean. Not to sound insensitive, but you know. No, you're right. It's... I mean, he got kicked out of the game. That's what we do it for, and um, I think that's that's bigger than the twenty-five thousand dollar fine. Uh, this is the big question, and I feel like I've been asking this question every season since the beginning of Draymond Green. But his on-court behavior is there any world, and they're never going to admit it. Maybe years from after retirement, but is it detrimental to this team? The fact that it's always him. I'm I'm gonna go out on a limb, and I'm gonna say yes. Hmm. At this point, you know that team is trying to find a groove. It's still early in the season; they can't afford they can't afford to not have him on the floor. Can't, I've all, I've mentioned it before. He's the floor general. He's the point guard of that team. He's gonna be the guy that makes sure everything runs, communication-wise on the defensive end. He's the anchor for that team, and so they can't afford for him to be out games. This is his second dust up this week. Yeah, I know. Yeah, it's you know, crazy. so no, this is yeah. yeah, this is his second one of the week, and something's going on. He's publicly said himself. His technical fouls probably cost him a championship years before yep. um, when he missed that big game six. And so just having that in the back of his mind and having that in the back of my mind, I would say at this point it's detrimental. But hmm. I don't know. I, I, I can't agree with you on this one, man. I feel like that's what got him where he is, you know, his passion, how he is. And, and without him, they're pretty much a mild merit team. And you, you can't really win championships like that, having everyone just mild merit like that. I think his, his tenacity. But you can't win him not playing either. I mean, this is game 11. Yeah, but he, like I said, he's mentioned before, yes, he felt like he cost him that championship by having, um, by being over the limit in his technical fouls. And so, again, when you're trying to, listen, Phoenix is on the way. Dallas is on the way. Denver is on the way. Lakers, the Clippers will figure it out. You can't really afford these, these type of games early on if you're the Golden State, you're the Golden State Warriors. Steph is out with a knee injury. Clay is still trying to find his rhythm. Like that team has a lot, a lot of uh, adversity right now. That for for yeah, for right. a chicken wing for him to be out five games, that's tough. I mean, we all know Dre. I don't think he absolutely. I don't think he runs and chokes anybody. No, don't get me wrong. I love it in, in <laughs> June. You know, <laughs> I, I love it. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I love it. But I just think just taking taking ourselves out of it, taking the entertainment aspect out of it. That's, that's gonna be a tough stretch right here for five games, especially if, if Steph Curry's not gonna be on the floor as well. He's gonna yeah. miss another in-season tournament game. Shams, did you have something to chime in? <laughs> yeah, I, I think with Draymond Green, it's always this weird, and you guys as players know, it's like every time he goes to that edge, and he this point he reaches the edge, and they have to reel him back in. They hope that he gets back on the same page. But listen, this is not gonna be the last time Draymond Green is going to get right back to that edge. He's going to test the limits. He's going to try, try to do something or get suspended again. But that's, that's the like Rudy said, that's kind of like the beauty of Draymond Green. That's the edge that he gives this team. But this is a guy that lives on the edge. And, and I don't know if he blacks out. I don't know what happens. I don't know if he just loses himself in the moment. I, I think if this, if this chokehold only happened for a split second and it happened real quick, it definitely wouldn't have been five games. Maybe one. Maybe you get a big fine. But the fact that he took him and dragged him three, four <laughs> seconds, five seconds, like that is to me, you, like you should have suspended him one game for every second. I, oh. I, I assume that's. I, I, I thought I, mean, I had him maybe, down maybe for one happened. game. I thought, I thought so I too. Thought it was going to be a one game. I thought it was going to be a slap on the hand. Yeah, no. I, and, I, I think he got tagged because of reputation on that. I mean, that's that should be the way. Look, when you're a kid and you're being punished, the more bad stuff I do, the bigger the punishment. I get it. I get it. But it's like, if he's your teammate, you probably love him. If he's on your team, you love him. But if you otherwise. 
Stop. I stand by my stance, man. Rudy should have bit him. <laughs> That's how you get out of that. They're, 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 just cut that for the ads. <laughs> the only way you can get out of a choke like that, you got to bite him. We would have just liked to, like, have, liked to see Rudy just fight back a little bit. With, yeah. so, with so much dirt yo, on yo, his Yo, but this is my thing. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to play devil's advocate here. Let's say if Cat gets involved, let's say he throws a punch, let's say he gets him a chokehold, then he's getting suspended. No. I think Cat got involved to a solid degree No, there. no, like, he no. Tried to see, separate see, it. No, Sean, see, let yes. me, let me, let me cut you off, Sean, see... It's some guys that need to have that on their re on their resume. Cat is one of those guys that he needs a punch on his resume. Rudy Gobert needs a punch on his resume to kind of get guys off of him, and that's what we're <laughs> that's what we're dealing with right now. And so, Draymond Green, not so much. We you, know he about that life. Do you think they're nervous <laughs> to punch because if the punch looks weak, then we're gonna mock them for a weak punch? Just throw. Just do something. Man. Just throw. I, I know I'm advocating for violence right That's here. That's fine. But I am. Like I said, some guys <laughs> need to be in a scenario where they can't, you can't feel like I, you can pick on me and do whatever right. you want to to me whenever you feel like it. And so I think those two guys are, they fit the bill for that. It's just bullying the playground. You got to go out there and stop. You got to fight for yourself. You the biting yourself. is good, though, because if this happened on the street, somebody comes up, you're going to do whatever. You're going to bite at the very least. Got to bite. Amongst other things. Bite your way out of that. <laughs> Um, there was basketball being played. Look, we, we all kind of left the show yesterday, went about our day. We got good news. We're thinking, oh, the big three is finally going to be out there. Eh. But it doesn't matter. The Suns won anyways, beating Minnesota. KD, 31-6-6. Six six. Booker, he's back. 31 points, 5 assists. And Carl Anthony Towns had 25-7. and seven. But the big news was the last-minute subtraction of Bradley Beal thinking, oh, we were going to see it, Shams. What happened? Yeah, Bradley Beal's back flared up yesterday pregame, and he was ruled out legitimately 45 minutes before the game, uh, I'm told. And so he came in, his back was in, it tightened up throughout the day, and there was obviously optimism. They believed he, he was going to be fine as the game got close. He tried to warm up, and his back just flared up. And this has to be frustrating on all sides. Uh, this has now been a month-long injury. It's been a lingering back injury that Bradley Beal's had for the last month or so. Obviously, it didn't matter. Devin Booker, Kevin Durant, 31 points each. Uh, Eric Gordon, Grayson Allen, 29 points, six threes. And, and Booker, like, let's give him credit. Three, he's only played three games so far, but his numbers are ridiculous. 31 points a game, nine assists, six rebounds. His splits are crazy. It's like 56% from the field, 46 from, from three, 100% from the free throw line. Like, he, him and Kevin Durant are enough for this team, I think, to, wet, to, to weather the storm. But... Uh, definitely a, a tough moment for the Suns yesterday, not having Bill back in the lineup. I mean, I'm curious from Lou and, and Rudy's perspective, like how do you handle this as a teammate, as a player, as a guy that's dealing with it, and how concerning is having this lingering back injury for a month and really being day-to-day -day with this? No, if once you're in that locker room, you deal with it. You know, nobody is... Uh, everybody's going to get hurt at some point yeah. during the season. And so as a player, you just hope for the best for a guy, hope he gets healthy and get, get on the floor whenever he can. Yeah, I mean, um, back, that's something you just really can't just go out there and play with. This is one of those debilitating injuries. So, like, you know, I think that he should take his time and get back, and I think it'll be more of a refreshing, you know, kind of moment when the team gets together. So whenever that happens. What does that do to you mentally when you have an injury like this that is a lingering-type injury? And you, think, and, you're, and you think you're going to play, and then 45 minutes before you can't. It's frustrating, but, we, you know, we're, we're accustomed to dealing with things day by day situation by situation, scenario by scenario. And so if I'm Bradley Bill and I was a 45-minute scratch right before that game, I feel really good about my opportunity to play in the next game. And so, oh. like I said, you're taking it day, day by day, trying to stay positive and trying to get back on the floor. Yeah, right. I mean, you know you know, Bradley Bill's excited to go out there and play with those guys, you know, get to, you know, be a part of the big three and, and, and all those things. And he has to really be hurt to, to not suit up with all those guys yet, so. I was bummed. I mean, fans were probably bummed. I was more. too. Yeah, right? I, we're going to finally was, see it. I was tuned in. But look, we did get KD and Booker together, and they did have a, a pretty decent night with 62 points combined. I know we don't have a, a large sample size for them, and that's, that's fine. But we always talk best duos in this league, Lou. If we get more of this, and hopefully we will, where are they? Like you just said, we could just keep getting sample sizes. I would like to see these guys um, be consistently on the floor with each other. We're not sleeping on them at all. We know exactly who Devin Booker and, and, and Kevin Durant are are as basketball players. And you seen it last night. These guys were cooking. And they play well together. You know, they take turns on the offensive end. KD has established himself years ago as a guy who tries to play the game the right way, doesn't try to take a lot of shots that's out of character for him, catches the ball in the right spots, plays at a great pace. 
Devin Booker does the same thing. You know, these are two very cerebral basketball players who play at their own pace, who plays the game the right way, are great teammates to each other. And so are we sleeping on them as a best duo? No, we're not. But we would like to see more consistency from these guys and seeing them throughout the entire season together. On the other side of things, Rudy, it was the second night of a back-to-back, -back, fourth game in a five-game road trip for Minnesota. Of course, they had the emotional roller coaster of the battle. Um, <laughs> they call them scheduling losses. Would this qualify? 100%. You, uh, you have an emotional night before. You run into, you know, arguably one of the best scorers ever. <laughs> You know, and with another up and coming uh, great score, you know, even though even without Bradley Bill, they're they're two generational talents. So, you know, and they had good nights. So, you know, I don't know if it's as much a scheduling error or they just ran into a team that was just ready to get that W. Yeah, that's a big Phoenix. We've been waiting for Phoenix. Phoenix, I think you could safely say has not lived up to what we thought yet. I mean, obviously, it's early and a lot of injuries. But yeah, I think they're, they're going to be hungry. <laughs> Anthony Edwards, everyone's favorite. Um, didn't have a great night. 13 points, 4 of 16 shooting. I mean, he's going to have nights like this, right? What Absolutely. do you learn from it? Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing. You get prepared for the next one. Like you said, they've, those guys have played four and five nights, mm. traveling, schedule is on you. You're going to have bad nights where the ball is not, isn't going to go in the rim. And I think collectively this team just probably didn't play their best basketball. A lot of distractions around them. Didn't shoot the ball well, didn't play great. He'll shake this one off and come back strong for the next one. I like that. Uh, moving on, as a talking head, it's mandatory, I say, could this possibly be an Eastern Conference Finals matchup? Uh, Celtics, Sixers. Celtics beat Philly, 117-107. They are now 9-2. and two. You didn't have Porzingis. You didn't have Jalen Brown. Uh, but Jason Tatum, 29 points. Derek White with 27. He had 14 of those in the fourth quarter, by the way. And Embiid and Maxie both had 20 apiece. Um, Joel Embiid admitted that the Celtics are the best team in the league uh, afterwards. If you're a teammate, if you're a Sixers fan, what do you make of that comment? A little bait and switch. <laughs> He's trying to disarm his enemies. You know, that's what, that's what Jerry I, Jones move, by the way. That's, <laughs> that's, what I, that's what I take from this. And, and on the flip side of that, listen, Joel is trying to light a fire under his team. We got to be better. You know, both teams were 8-2 going into that matchup. That was a big game considering um, where they were in the standings. Obviously, it's still really early, but he's trying to light a fire under his team. We got to be better. We got to, in order for us to feel like we're going to be the best team in the East, we have to win matchups like this um, during this juncture of the season. And so I think that was, that was the reasoning for that, him just trying to tell his teammates, we just got to be better and kind of disarming Boston at the same time. Do you guys always know, for example, in this case, would everyone on the team know that he had said that? Or do you because I wouldn't know no, everything you, you guys say. You yeah, so you have to tell. Yeah, okay. everybody's their own personal right. yeah. business. And so when, it's not like, oh my God, I can't believe you said No, that. if okay. it comes across unless, your desk. Unless it's bad. Unless it's yeah, really unless bad. Unless it's bad. Um, absolutely. Yeah. Okay, I kind of love that. Um, Al Horford got the start in place of Porzingis, had a big shot down the stretch, and then, then trolled Philly, a Phillies fan. Um, he also held Embiid to a season low 20, which is kind of, I guess, the bigger story here. But... We haven't talked a lot about Al Horford. He seems to have decent nights against Embiid. Why is that? I don't know. You know, they played together. Obviously, it didn't work for him there. But, you know, he's just been misconsistent for Boston, man. He's been, ever since he's been there, you know, with or without him being in the He represented line. for the old guys, too. Yeah, he, oh, yeah, <laughs> he's, he he's been he able. Is. He's been yeah. able to elude the old tag for, sure. for a long time. For sure. People forget about that. Yeah. You yeah. <laughs> won't see the, the, the receding hairline and thinking. Yes, we about do. That. We see it. What is wrong <laughs> with you? <laughs> <laughs> but, um, you know, he's just, you know, it's just one of those things. Like, he just gets up to, 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 to play against the 76ers. There's bad blood between them and, and playing behind and be trying to play with them when he was there. And, and I guess he just figured out how to play them. So... You know, sometimes you run against players that just know how to guard you. Yeah, I like that. I like the, the Celtics figured out some stuff with Maxi. Um, the defense of, of Maxi, is that was going to be an issue? Can we expect it to get better? Yeah, it'll get better. I think they'll put a system in where they can kind of put him in, in, in scenarios where he can be successful on a defensive end where he won't become a liability and have an opportunity to stay on the floor, especially during playoff time. Playoff time, as Rudy know, hmm. you're going to take away a lot of options on the offensive end yeah. anyway. There's not going to be a lot of ISO basketball being played. We're not going to let you sit up there, dribble the basketball, and do what you want to do in the playoffs. They're going to run. They're going to jump, take the ball out of scorers' hands. And so I think we'll see that coming down the stretch. But 
you know, Nick Nurse will definitely find ways to put him in situations to be successful. When I played for Doc Rivers, Doc told me, listen, I don't expect you to be a lockdown defender. I expect you to be in the right positions at the right times and to communicate with your teammates. And so I see something similar for, for Maxi coming hmm. down the stretch. Nick Nurse will do the right things by him. Uh, Tatum came to the defense recently of his teammate Derek White because he was left off a top 100 players list. Do you think White doesn't get the amount of respect he deserves? I mean, Say no. What now? Who, yeah. who are we talking I mean, about? Yeah. Derek White. Come on. See, that's that's the reason right yeah, there. See, that All wasn't right. a good. See, that's not Derek good. White. He's always been a quiet player. He's not flashy. He's right. just a solid player. He gets it done, and he gets it done when he's supposed to. Like at, at the big times. Like today was a big game for him. Well, yesterday was a big game for yeah. him because you know guys were out and he had to step up. And he always does consistently. Um, look, top 100. Yeah. I, I want to. I want to change my. Yeah, I think he's a top 100 player. Yeah, for yeah? sure. Yeah. Initially, I thought. Well, like, let's go through of, it. Of to, like a bigger list, but right now, currently. Right yes, now, currently. He's without a doubt, a top 100. Player. Yeah, you just don't. Don't. You, we're being old right now. Man, he's a top 100 <laughs> player. A lot. Man, I thought it was a different player with the new haircut, man. It's like, <laughs> right? what are we looking at here? Right, like, it's a rebrand. Yeah, it's a rebrand. <laughs> so yeah, the new Derek White is a top 100 player. 100 sounds like a lot. That's a lot. It but if we sat down That's here and started to list it out. He, he, he's like top 30, 35. Wow. Yeah, I, That's just know. a that's just a roundabout guess. You you figure 24 All-Stars. Okay. Plus really good players after that. That seems, oh, I right mean, I like Derek White. Right how he's playing. Yeah, how he's okay. playing. Okay, I'll give you that. Yeah. We're going to give him that. I don't know if sure. we're giving them that. I mean, are we agreeing to Let's that? do it. Let's well, do it. Okay, top, you know top, what? Derek White is a top The homework player. for the weekend is to make this list so we can see exactly top, where it's Top 50. Top okay, 50. 50. Uh, 50. Top 50. Right. We, we can land on it that. already. Yeah. <laughs> Fair enough. We can land on that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Western Conference, we had Kings, Lakers last night. Uh, Kings, this was a good one. LeBron had a triple-double, and the Kings still managed to win this one, 125-110. Sabonis with 29 and 16. And LeBron's line was 28, 10, and 12. Um, we're going to get to the Kings in a second because LeBron had his 108th triple double last night, um, passing Jason Kidd for Make number five. Every oh, night. It's kind of crazy. Uh, reminder: He's 38 years old. But Rudy, you're 37, so I want you to just. I knew this was coming. I know you know. Well, this you had to. age shaming. That's age. I'm not age. <laughs> yeah, please, I'm exactly a thousand years old up here. Um, when you watch him doing what he's doing, like what what do you think? What are your thoughts? It's amazing. It's amazing to see him still play at this level uh, at the age he is. Um, I don't think we've seen, well, you know, not like he plays. We haven't seen anybody play like he does at this point in their career. Um, you know, it just shows how, how dedicated he is to, to his body and, 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 and to this game, man. Um, it's impressive. I mean, Lou, what would, you, what would you say? What machines is he? Like, what do we need to be doing? I think we, if we all knew that, the game would be different. Mm. You know what I mean? He's like the woman who won't tell us her secrets. She just says, I drink a lot of water. And we know that's not true, <laughs> no, by the way. Yeah, I just, I'm just impressed every night that he goes out. <laughs> you know, he's, he's walking history. Yeah. And I've, I've always said this in debates about LeBron when it comes to the greatest players of all time. The only thing that's different between him and everybody else He's had an expectation level for excellence since he was yeah. 14, 15 years old. Mm -hmm. So 20 years later, 25 years later, <laughs> he's still here. Mm -hmm. And he's still doing these things. A triple-double last night, passing Jason Kidd. Every time he gets a rebound, every time he gets an assist, every time he scores a point, it is a new mark in history. Yeah. You, you got to celebrate that. Got to. And I heard someone say the other night... Um, that when you look at the Lakers, at any given moment on the floor, the one guy who seems to always care the most is him. And I, and I thought, you know what, the physical stuff's cool and all, but the fact that you can still get up for each and every game and give a damn is actually pretty impressive at this it's, point. Yeah, it's, it's presence. He has, he has such a demanding presence when he's out on, the, out on the floor. He demands respect from his teammates, and he demands respect from his opponents when he goes out there and play. You know, at 38 years, I've played against some older guys, and it's like, Go at O'Head. Go at O'Head. <laughs> That's not the situation with LeBron. You know, he's still a, a, a very big threat to a lot of basketball teams. Yeah. Triple-double last night. Whew. Like, come yeah. on, man. Yeah. Um, the story of AD continues. It's a trend. It's a pattern. <laughs> uh, he had nine points, nine rebounds, and five turnovers. After the game, he said, quote, I just played bad. We spend a lot of time talking about Anthony Davis because the expectations are, are big, and I think that's a good thing to have. But he has these great games where he's dominant, and then it's almost as if flip-flops to a mediocre game, and it seems to happen like that every time. Why is he so inconsistent? Um, 
I mean, that's, that's the thing. He's, he's allowed to have bad games. I think the fact that he plays with LeBron, he's expected to be at this level every day. We just talked about LeBron being 38 and still getting triple doubles, and we really don't see much of this from LeBron. But AD is a is a once in a lifetime talent as well. Um, it doesn't show us all the time, but you know he has a you know he has a different spotlight on him playing with 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 LeBron. But um, you know I, I I agree with him. He just has to play better. I mean, for what they want out of him, yep. he has to play better. And um, I, I see him being consistently better than this. You know, this is just a low form, and that happens. And my thing is, like I just said, like I just mentioned with LeBron, it's about presence, right? When you're out on the floor, you wanna you wanna install some real fear in your opponents. Hmm. And sometimes AD just get lost in games where you don't really feel his presence. You don't really feel him out on the floor. And so I would just like for him to bottle that up. Like every time out, even if you're gonna have a bad shoot night, you're gonna do this and that, still have a major presence yeah. and have an impact on the game at some level. So Shams, we're hearing that, you know, with AD sort of being inconsistent, the, the big two as it is. And then Austin Reeves, trying to figure out what's going on there as well. So are the Lakers looking to maybe add a piece or, or move things around? I know the Zach Levine stuff's out there. Yeah, I think last night's an interesting example, a good example of why, like, having a third player that can score the ball at a high level. I think D'Angelo Russell played well last night. He's played well the last couple games, making threes. Uh, so he's coming on as a scorer right now. But they, they you know, having a third guy, have, having a guy that can add more offensive punch, and that's why there is a level of interest in Levine, from what I'm told. And, I think the window for the Lakers to really make a potential move, that opens up in mid-December when all the guys that they re-sign in the summer, D'Angelo Russell, Rui Hachimura, Austin Reeves, those guys are all free, were all free agents, brought back. They will be trade eligible starting in, in mid-December. So there's not anything that's viable for them to do over the next several weeks. But I think once it gets to December, January, the Lakers can really get a look at how this team is. The thing about Levine, though, he's in year two of a five-year Two hundred fifteen million dollar deal. So you make forty million dollars this year. You need multiple salaries, <laughs> like two, three Let deals, money. <laughs> just to add up to that. And the Lakers also just have one first round pick that they can trade. So uh, do you want to use that on Zach Levine potentially? So hmm. a lot of questions for the Lakers. I think the next month or so will give them a good chance to answer that. Would you use that on getting Zach Levine here? I mean, this is on brand for the Lakers. Yeah. If, if they're off to slow starts, that is, that's usually a team that's very active yeah. around the trade deadline to make sure they give their, themselves an opportunity to make a championship. I mean, they completely changed their destiny last year. Got and way they, better. And yeah. if they feel like yeah. they have an opportunity to do it again, they'll do it again. They'll do it again. Uh, Knicks played last night, faced Atlanta. Oh, I'm sorry, did I say, what did I say? I said Knicks. Oh, we're doing the Kings. Oh, my God. That's just like I just brain farted in the middle yeah, of the okay. show. Let's go. I brain farted when let's, I saw let's go. Levine makes. Yeah, I know. I wanted to move on to the Knicks because I got all excited about it, but we're not even there yet. Um, Darren Fox is back, and they've won both those games. It's exactly the way one would predict, by the way. Two and three when he was out. I, you know, obviously his impact is ginormous, but how important is it that he stay out there and be healthy? He sets the standard for this team by, by pace. Last night I watched that game off the tip. He gets the ball, attacks D'Angelo Russell, and one off the tip. This is the very first play of the game. So he sets the tone for this basketball team with how fast he plays, how fast he gets the ball up the floor. You know, this team wants to play open. They want to play open basketball, running up and down the floor, getting a lot of opportunities in the open court. And he's going to be the head of the snake a lot of times for that team. And so for me, just watching as a fan last night off the tip, I knew he was going to have a big night. I knew that this game was going to be a fast paced a uh, basketball game in the, the show, yeah, in the show, in the way he played. But I thought from the tip, he set the tone. And so that's the impact that he has for this basketball team. I like it. He's asking LeBron, why is that a foul? <laughs> There's like so good moments in there. I am sorry, Sacramento. I did not mean to gloss over you. Forgive me. Uh, but now we will go to the Knicks. I did want to get to this one as well. Playing Atlanta, they, they beat them. They got by 116-114. Julius Randle with 29-10-8. Jalen Brunson threw in 24 points and 8 assists. And Bogdanovich off the bench with 20. Yeah, bogey. I, that's, that's, that ain't bad. All right, Julius Randle had a slow start and was hearing it from the fans so early on in the season. And he's bounced back a bit with some solid games. Um, all right, how far this team as it is with Brunson and Randle, can they go? Uh, I, don't, I don't know. I don't, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I mean, Julius, he's been playing... He's, he, you know, he had very slow start. Oof, Let's yeah. say very slow start. That's fair. But um, I don't know. I, I don't think I don't think they mesh well. Yeah. I mean, the Knicks have uh, been trying. They've been trying to find that. There you go. Here's some controversy. Been, no, I mean, keep no, going. No, keep no, going. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. They've been they've been trying to find that player and those, that mix of players, but I still don't think they found it. You know, Jalen Brunson is the guy we talked about earlier that has the heart. 
And Julius has been known to have the heart, too. I just feel like sometimes they don't mesh out there. I feel like Julius sometimes has that AD effect where you're just like, I, I know you're better than whatever I'm seeing right now. And he just sort of shies back. I don't know why. Why would that happen? Yeah, I don't know. I'm on a, I'm on a fence about this Knicks team. You know, in a league where so many guys get moved so much, I think they're sticking to their guns with their core guys and, and, and Julius and RJ, and then you add Jalen to that mix. You know, you got a pretty good core. Let these guys, let, let them sort it out. Let's see what happens in the next couple of years. A couple of years? That's, you Whoa, know, that's nobody's nobody that patient. Are they, are they a championship contender this year? No. Are they, so there you go. But they There's are no in pressure. New York. Yeah. They are in New York, but the there's the time goes faster in New York. Time, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I agree yes. with I agree with both of y'all, but you got you got but you have time on your hands for for, for lack of better for anything else. For who? Yeah. Tibbs? Not Tibbs. <laughs> Probably not Tibbs. He's the only piece. But like you said, they're not a championship contending team right now, how they're built. They have time. And the aces. Just, that yeah, it is stacked. Uh, we're gonna play a game of in or out when we come back. Are the guys in on Cade Cunningham? We'll see. The running back. Yeah. Run it up, the running back, run it up, run it back, run it up. Love that. It can only mean one thing. Shams has some info for us. We talk a lot about the Clippers, but we haven't really concentrated on the big man situation since Plumlee went out, but they made a move. Yeah, Michelle, so Mason Plumlee, we've been talking about him for the last week or so. MCL sprain, he's going to be out up to two months. And so they've looked for size. They've, they've looked into several bigs. And now Daniel Tice, he gets a buyout from the Pacers. And I'm told he's expected to join the Clippers on Friday uh, after he clears waivers. And so this is a guy averaged 11 points, 5 rebounds, 50% shooting for, for Germany in their gold medal run in the FIBA World Cup. So they, they needed size bad behind Ivisa Zubac. And I think getting Daniel Tice, obviously Lou and Rudy played against him. They can speak to his game probably better than I can. But... I think getting him in now, being able to have an athletic guy that can shoot uh, and, and have at least somewhat of a presence to back up Ivisa Zubas. They've played P.J. Tucker a lot at the backup five since that trade, uh, but they, they need size badly. That's not the most of their concern, but getting size was important. I <laughs> like that was very subtle. It's not the most of their <laughs> concerns right now. Um, but you just yesterday said you liked the lineup the best when P.J. Tucker was in. So now they're adding a world champion. See, we can finally use that in there, guys. There uh, Daniel Tice. <laughs> Is he going to get minutes? How do you see this playing out? Yeah, I mean, Mason Plumlee was, was playing a lot of those minutes before he went out. So I see him replacing him. He, that's another solid vet that gives, him, gives them uh, somebody that can stretch their floor, that's going to play defense, give them a lot of opportunities to win basketball games. So I, I like this move for the Clips. It's, it's a, a fix of something, right? Uh, we don't it's hope. not the big thing. I mean, listen. <laughs> it's something. Any, anything helps right now. Yeah, yeah. I don't, I, don't, I don't know if this helps them. I mean, obviously, they need size. They need options. That's what it is. Options. options. I think, uh, like you said, with PJ out there, he, he's, you know, he's kind of like that firecracker, that guy to go out there and just do anything. And I think they're better with him. If they're going to go small, he's not, you know, this, this game, he's not necessarily a small, but, mm. um, or a big. We don't know. What, we, we never know what PJ is out there. <laughs> but um, hybrid. Yeah, he's a hybrid. But um, I don't know. I mean, like we said, this doesn't help nor, nor hurt. But, you know, they need size. And. They did that. Options, bodies, shams. Enjoy your weekend. We'll see you bright and early on Monday. <laughs> you guys soon. Um, time to play a little in or out. Cade Cunningham missed most of last season after surgery. He had the stress fracture in his leg. He's averaging career highs in points and assists um, starting this season. Are you in or out on Cade as a number one? I'm in. He's playing well despite the team, is it? You know, but. That's, those are growing pains. This is a very young basketball team, very experienced coach. And so I think they get, they, they write this ship, you know, with, with some time. And, I, and like I keep saying, the NBA is very impatient with, with young yeah. guys and young teams now. But I'm buying that he can be the number one guy. You put some good vets around him, keep some of those young pieces. I think this Detroit team, they start to turn the corner very soon. Oh, yeah. agree? I'm in. Um, I think he's, he's, you know, obviously number one pick. He's, he's, he's a great player. I think last year kind of stunted his growth a little bit. But, you know, he's, he's one of those guys that he has to learn by, you know, going out there and failing. And, and you know, obviously they're not expected to win a championship. And, that helps. You know, that, yeah, that helps a lot. <laughs> you, know, you got a new coach, a coach, a guy that's going to gonna, um, demand a lot from him. And I think he's going he's gonna to be good in this league. I feel like zero expectations is the best time to learn. Oh, man. Then you can surprise the world. Um, Scotty Barnes, well, he, his second season wasn't as great as one probably would have wanted. A bit of a slump, but right now, career high in points, rebounds, 
and assists. So are you in, Rudy, on Scotty Barnes as a cornerstone for this Raptors team? Um, am I in? I, I'm going to say no. No, I'm not. I'm not. I mean, this is a guy that obviously the new coach and, and new philosophy, you know, has helped him a lot. But, you know, I, I mean, he's one of those guys. I, I don't know what position he plays or what he does that well to say uh, he's a cornerstone type of guy. I won't elaborate. Go ahead. What do you mean you won't elaborate? <laughs> that's it. I, what? The, the, <laughs> that's it. I, I'm, I'm out. <laughs> Um, out. I, okay. Two I, outs. I'm, I'm out. I would like. I would like to see Scotty somewhere else where he can really thrive. Well, remember, every he was the untouchable in any trade options. Like that was the one piece. We learned things change That's a good very point. fast. Very fast. We learned yeah. things change very <laughs> fast. So I would. I would like to see him in another scenario where he can really thrive, where he can have a, a clean cut position on where he's going to play, yeah. how he's going to play. Right now, I, I just. I don't see it. So I'm out. All right, two outs on Scotty Barnes. Ouch, that feels weird. Uh, Lou, Jonathan Kaminga has had a pretty up and down first few years. I think that's actually very safe to say. A lot of cri mm -hmm. criticism. Um, Warriors are trying to figure out what the plan is with him. But right now he's averaging almost 12 a game, which would be a career high. Is he likely to get more playing time, obviously, with Draymond out? Are you in or out as Kaminga? I'm, I mean, I'm in. Yeah. I'm in. Any team that has Steph Curry is a title contender. And so... Him having an opportunity to play these minutes while Draymond is out. I would like to see some consistency from the young guy. We've yeah. seen flashes of how good he can be. We hadn't seen it consistently. He hadn't bottled it up. He hadn't figured out what he brings to the table yeah. for that basketball team. And so I'm in. I hope he starts to turn the corner. I hope. I just want to see some consistency, especially him being in a great organization that's been patient with his, with his progress. So it's time to pay that forward, pay that back to that team, start playing consistently. Feels like we got flashes very early on yeah. and then just sort of the couldn't figure out what to do. Do you yeah. agree? He's. I'm, I'm in on him yeah. too. I All mean, right. he's he's a guy that's 21 years old, just turned 21. That's um, crazy. People forget that Steph Curry is 35 years old. <laughs> you know, I mean. That's, yeah, because he looks like a baby. You never remember. That, yeah, yeah, that, and he's still he's playing at a high level. So it's like you know, eventually this 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 organization is going to need somebody to take the take that that next to the next level. You think Kaminga is one of those guys that can do that? We don't know. Yeah. We don't know. The inconsistencies. Well, I mean, inconsistencies, but, you know, like you said, they, they're, you don't, they don't have time to develop players. They're trying to win a championship right. every day. So if, they right. can't, if he can't fill that role, he has to sit. But, you know, maybe coming up, he, he'll, he'll show he's some classes of what he's going to have. Great opportunity got, now. Great got opportunity. at least five games to uh, yeah. get yourself <laughs> out. Um, <laughs> Straight up. <laughs> Alfred Shingoon is averaging 19, 8, and 6. Um, I'm in. Oh, boom! There we go. go. I'm a fan. I'm a fan. He's, <laughs> there just, we go. he's just weird. Like he's just a weird player, man. I like I like to watch him. You never like he does some things. You're like, man, like he he's, he runs up the court. Look at look at this. Oh, no, look at not this. this look at this. Now. He's so wormy. Look at that. Hey Dang. now. That's a that's a weird dunk. He, you know, I'm a fan. I'm a fan. Where's he from? Where's he from? Anybody now? Turkey, right? He's Turkish, He's right? Turkish. He's Turkish. Look at that. Look at oh that. Oh my. Damn, y'all could have gave him another highlight. Shout man. out back to the to back big, dunk. Shout out the to same the highlight. Turkish guy. Six. This is my guy right there. Poor Zach Collins. He didn't like that. You in too? I'm in if Rudy. <laughs> <laughs> That's not how it works. You can't just be in. <laughs> That's crazy. Listen, 19, 8, and 6. Yeah, you got to be in. Those are, those are big numbers right there. Nothing to sniff at right there. All right, fair enough. Two ins on that one. And uh, here we go. Greg Popovich mm, has made Jeremy Sohan the Spurs point guard. This is an experiment that's going on down in San Antonio. And Trey Jones has been coming off the bench, who is, of course, a true point guard. Jeremy Sohan had this to say about it. Quote, there have been moments where it's like, yo, I don't want to. It's like, F this. <laughs> it is the first time I have ever played point guard in my life. Um, and there are moments where that's very obvious, Lou, unfortunately. Are you in or out? on Pop using this moment this year to develop Sohan? Listen, Jeremy is really, really out. So I'm he's going out with him. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta trust the player, man. Yeah, listen, he, he's, not for, he's not for it at all. And sometimes that's where being a coach like Pop comes in. You feel like you know what's best for the basketball team, but the other fight of that is you have to have guys to buy into it mm -hmm. in order for it to work out and be successful for you. And so if he's not comfortable with it and his numbers are down, I'm out. Same for you. I mean, how long do you She's give it? She's the Spurs fan. Don't, don't well, let her off the hook. No, you not. tell us. Well, are you in the, I'm just wondering how long this experiment's going to be given. And we know, Pop, look, Pop's stubborn. Are He's earned it. Yeah. I, are you out? That's your I team. Haven't, I have not loved it so far. 
It has not been great. I'm far, I'm so far out. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, this is. I'm outside looking I, in. I feel like if it makes Jeremy the if it makes the player uncomfortable, then I think it's going to take away from what brought him there in the first place. Like, why'd you draft him number nine for those reasons, and now you might kill those? Yeah, Be being being that play for Pop, I know that's what he's trying to do, make him uncomfortable. Yeah, but you know. Obviously, uh, you know, even the best coaches, man, can't make you do something you don't want to do. So he doesn't feel comfortable. I don't feel comfortable. Lou doesn't feel comfortable. <laughs> he sh we're this out. Is a, this is a unanimous decision. This is unanimous. You know, this is a team that just, that just had a big loss. And so right now, I don't, I don't know if this is the time to ruffle the feathers of the other guys and trying to figure out different ways to play. This guy, he's not even open to it. I mean, look, he is doing, he and Pop have already had some big moments. He does still shoot the free throws one-handed, which was a, a Pop-Jeremy collaboration. <laughs> uh, but, I, yeah, the, the point guard thing doesn't seem to be, not yet anyways. Out. Out. I'll give you some more time. Um, Rudy, Shaden Sharp, averaging almost 19 in his sophomore campaign, uh, in or out as the best prospect. Ooh, big controversial time, on that Blazers team. Yeah, would give me this question. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I mean, Portland is like everybody that we expect to do. I mean, we ha they have Jeremy on on that team, who is uh, obviously uh, has been proven. But you know, he's playing pretty well. He's he's getting he's having those growing pains. They're not winning a damn thing. But other yeah. than that, he's he's out there. He's 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 working hard, man. Ooh. I know I know Chauncey is uh, trying to get the most out of him, and it looks like he's he's turning the page. They do have Scoot, which is that's why I'm like, hmm. He's been hurt though, right? The yeah, Scooter's, Scooter's been out. I, I'm, I'm in on this kid. I, I watched him play open the night for the Clippers, and he made a fan of me. I, 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 right. I, I'll be honest, I didn't know who he was. Had no idea, but he made a fan of me. I looked him up after that, you know, and so I'm in on this guy being a prospect. He's been one of the few bright bright spots for Coach Billups. Hmm. You know, I, I've worked with Chauncey before. Coach Billups sounds Coach so Billups. official. Oh, wow. I, I, did, do I did that on purpose. <laughs> okay. I did that on purpose to give Coach Billups his proper respects. <laughs> I've, I've worked with Chauncey before. I've worked with Big Shot before, but to see Coach Billups, I want, I want, I want to really yeah. see him be successful. That's throwing me off. I'm like, you mean Chauncey? <laughs> yeah, right. Like, you talking about the same person? Yeah, I was giving him his proper due. <laughs> Sounds so official. I'm a big fan it. of this kid. I'm in. Um, yeah, he's the kid that we wanted to see in the slam dunk contest last year, but they didn't put him in the, the rookie game, so he was like, oh, I'm not going. Makes sense. Fair enough. I want Makes to see sense. him. Start my vacation. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I, I want to see it, though. This guy has yeah. crazy, crazy, crazy athleticism. We would like to see that. Uh, we're taking a quick break here. When we come back, that man has a family. Run it up. Run it back, run it back, run it up, run it back, yeah. Run it up, run it back, yeah, yeah. Very impressive. Amazing. Have a family, and um, well, we're gonna start here. Vucevic, Brooke Lopez. Mm. Oh. Oh. Okay. I hope his family it. wasn't watching. <laughs> <laughs> Good for Brooke. I still see Brooke as a rookie. Yeah. It's weird. It's like a grown man. Oh, oh and he smiled. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Hey, Always nice. good vibes. <laughs> <laughs> Always good vibes from Brooke Lopez. The Lopez but twins. this wasn't cool. No, <laughs> it, was, it wasn't. It's a reminder. I can also do this. Oh, God, the court. Okay, SGA oh. and on Kim oh, Penny. Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh, did Shay do that or was it one of the decals? No, I'll take the line with you, young fella. Uh, oh. Right? <laughs> Distracted by. Yeah, well. What are you going to do? His name barely fits on the back of that jersey. Yeah. You'd have to do something about that. Oh, Thompson yeah, on Capella. Oh, Clint. Acapella. Clint, this a bad John, Clint. I oh, call it, I call I, it acapella because he was by himself. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, here we go. Out there. Well, someone just Come got on. real comfortable. <laughs> Come on, CC. Yeah, that's, a, that's a kid, too. What are you yeah. doing? Hey, man, young legs. Oh, young man. Legs. Oh, oh, I do. Love God, that court's oh, wow. even worse. This course a killing. This looks yeah. like a blood course. Yes. Okay. Yeah, that yeah, was Bruce. that was pretty. Oh. Hey, Maxie. Oh. You ain't got a guard when you do stuff like that, Max. Nope. Don't That's worry so about much. nothing. He's just having. To, I, this is a fun story. This might be one of the best stories in they the game. They score twos, you score three. Yeah. <laughs> Tell him that looks like you out there, man. Going the other way though. Hey, man. You Going know. the other way though. <laughs> Back in my day. <laughs> An old school chase down. Oh. oh. Ooh. Ooh. Okay. Come on. Get a ball. Okay, get a ball bro. up. Did he not remember that this can happen? Rudy, that's going on film. He got to get that ball up. Yeah, he got to get the ball up. He, you know, get he, ball he up. would pass right? that usually. He must have needed that, you know, trying to get 30. He probably was trying to get a number. Look. Yeah, 29 trying yeah, to get 30. You gotta, yeah, you got to kick that up. <laughs> <laughs> he paid for it. Yeah, he did. Old man Bronny. Yep, still got it. Still doing it. Drew Bakes. I, I want Bron to just go full gray beard. I, uh, <laughs> oh, 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 my. Who is come that? Come on, come that's on, Chad. Look, look at Cat's reaction Kat. right here. 
Chandler will be proud. <laughs> Shout out to Chandler. You'll be proud, but will be. Oh man. Chandler roots for the white guys yeah, doing He likes great to break things. down the racial divide wow, in we did. Racial? <laughs> in this climate? Yeah, he does. In this climate, Chandler does it. <laughs> wow, that was all right. Former spur right there. Uh, around the league we go. Thunder Warriors. Thunder doing quite well. Uh, Draymond suspended. We know this. Steph Curry gonna miss his second straight game with the knee injury. And we got Clay Wiggins and CP3 all struggling. All that being said, what chance do you give the Warriors? They got a fighting chance. You fighting know, they're, chance. they're playing a team with, with, a, with a record that's very similar to theirs. They're playing at home tonight. You know, this is a veteran basketball group that's, that's accustomed to dealing with some, some guys in and out of the lineup. So hmm. they, got a fighting, they got a fighting shot. Listen, when you're a pro, you always got a chance, especially at home. So. I'm glad you brought that up because last year the big, one of the big stories was the Warriors and how much they struggled on the road, 11 and 30. So weird. And this season, it's not much better. They started one and four. Talk to me about the difference, how big it really is on the road and at home. Because a team like this, it doesn't make sense. I don't, I don't know. I, I, what, I mean, they're older guys. I guess they like to be home and like their own beds and stuff like Man. that. I don't know, but uh, that was that was that was that was crazy. Um, but you know, they're they're one of those teams that can turn it on. So you know, obviously they're very dominant on their big three, and um, this would be a good night for to see what you know Chris can do. He can be fully himself, go out there and be comfortable, and and also bring the youngest along. Have we relaxed on the CP3 six man of the year talk? Have I mean, we, have we relaxed from that? No, I don't know. Have we completely? We were we were heavy on it he was about in two it weeks ago. Two yeah. weeks ago. <laughs> two weeks long ago. Long season that we finished. We were, it's a long, it's a long yeah. season. Yeah, we'll see. Because now now he's gonna obviously not be the sixth man of the year. Uh, yeah. Break time. We got. To, I can't believe I'm about to say these words. We have a story about Dennis Rodman. Next. Running back, yeah. Run it all. The running back, yeah, yeah. See, Danny <laughs> Green got a hype video. Yeah. You got a hype yeah. video. <laughs> uh, what have you thought about doing the show the last couple of days? Has Lou helped you? Lou, Lou has not helped me at all. He's put a lot of pressure on me. I don't like him sitting right here. You know, but it's been very fun, man. It's you got to come back when Chandler's here, man. We have a, we have a good oh, time. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. We Watch need, Chandler we say need stupid Chandler. things out loud. It's you great. know, I've watched already, but <laughs> to be a part of it would be different, man. I've had fun. Thank you guys for having me. No, man. it's been awesome. I, yeah, I hope you'll come back. It's been good. Yeah, yeah. I ain't scare you off. No, Appreciate bro. it. No, no, no. <laughs> oh, you can't scare me off. <laughs> Not yet. Before you go, uh, there was a moment last night, Doc, where we was talking about one night in San Antonio, Dennis Rodman babysat the kids because he had offered and Doc took him up on it. Uh, just your initial reaction, that's all. Your initial reactions to that visual. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what Doc was thinking. Man. I mean, you must be desperate. Babysitter canceled. Man, uh, you know. Doc had, some, Doc had something going on out there. Man, with his high level income, he could have <laughs> died anybody. Doc had something going on outside. He was, yeah. get, he was leaving no matter that what. Was quick, right? That was a quick move. He was leaving. I no mean, I, I'm from San Antonio. I feel like there are other babysitters that you could have found. But there's a lot of But it's a great people. story. It is a great story. That's a terrible story. The, but, also, who else can say that Dennis Rodman babysat your kids? I mean... I might let Dennis Rodman babysit mine for the sake of the story. But I'll, I'll be you because I would never do that. <laughs> <laughs> right? I wonder if the, what they remember and if he... He might be a great babysitter. And he might no, shock listen, the world. Listen, Austin looked like he turned out just fine. Does he? I'm sure Austin had to be one of the kids, right? Well, now we got to think about it. Is Austin okay? Yeah, we, yeah, we got to do the we got to do the math on that. But Austin looked like he did pretty, pretty okay for. Us. I will say they probably had a lot of fun. Yeah, they probably did all kinds of stuff they weren't supposed to do. All kinds of. I'm down. This has I'm been a great visual to Ice end cream the show. For dinner. <laughs> <laughs> That's it for us. We'll be back on Monday. Oh, oh at least ice back, cream. Yeah. Run it all, run it back, yeah, yeah. Run it all, run it back, run it all, run it back, run it all, run it back, run it all.